Welcome, my friends. Meet Peter Porker, the newest card here in Snap. My name is Peter Porker. He was bitten by a radioactive pig, works for the Daily Beagle, and on reveal, transforms the highest cost card in your opponent's hand into a pig, keeping its power and cost. This could literally not get any weirder. It can get weirder. Very important distinction. That is not a base power and cost. The pig is considered by the game to be its own card that is a base four cost, and base zero power. <laughs> this means that he does have synergy with Zabu. Zabu will discount whatever is pigged. Why the developers decided to make him a four cost, I have no idea. <laughs> Just out of the blue, Zabu will always make your pigged card cheaper. Also, because his base power is a zero, oh, a little overlooked controlled card named Shadow King would be able to reset him back to his original base power, which is zero. You'll be able to remove all of the power of the card. So if you are worried about opponents adapting into a meta that is going to be flush with Spider Ham, playing a lot of Infinite, playing a lot of powerful cards with negative abilities uh, that they actually want you to pig out on, the Shadow King would be able to send them back to the Shadow Realms with no power left in their pockets. Oh. Spider Ham is such an amazing tool. Releasing directly into Series 4, he is an absolute recommended buy for me. I think this guy is incredible. Another important distinction, it is public information what card gets picked. You, when you play Spider Ham, will know what card you knocked out of the opponent's hand or what card you removed the ability from, and then you can decide whether or not you want to snap after that. If you are really hesitant and worried about actually providing a benefit to your opponent, then you could always run something like the White Queen to be able to get a peek into the opponent's deck and then be able to decide if you want to ham or not. I think that because Ham is showing you what is getting hit, just playing him early is completely fine, and then you can decide whether you are leaning toward a snap or a retreat based on seeing what card that got hit. Because genuinely, it is that much of a polarizing control card. If you hit something like Sarah out of a Sarah deck, then you want to snap on them immediately. They lost the ability of their central card. If you hit the Infinite, you will probably be hovering the retreat, understanding that they have this enormous card that is going to be thundering down on you in the endgame, unless you have a way to be able to deal with it, which in some situations you certainly will be. I think the best place for Spider-Ham to immediately find success is in this deck, titling it Bounce of Pride, swapping him in place of the Ice Man here, both one cost with a form of control, hand attack up against the opponent, so it sits in just very nicely. Now, I do understand you get diminishing returns based on replaying Spider-Ham. If I pig a card, say a six cost card, then I recall Spider-Ham due to either Falcon or Beast, and I play the Spider-Ham yet again, he can pig the exact same card to effectively no benefit for me. It does tell me that the opponent didn't draw um, a more expensive card, perhaps if I was hitting a 5 cost. So there are some fringe cases where I'm still gaining a little bit of information, but largely it's going to be wasted on additional activations. However, I am still rocking it. I love the shell of the deck here, and I think that a little bit of control to be able to trim off the high ends from the opponent's decks is still going to be a tremendous benefit for me. You also have a couple other decks that I have uh, brewed up with a very different styles if you want to be able to take a different looks at these guys. We're going with the Go Ham Hand Attack deck right here, bringing out the molded and folded shell and popping in the Spider Ham because there's just so much hand attack that is going on here, filling their hand with the Sentinels and a pig, meaning that they don't want to play the Sentinels or they, they can't get rid of the Sentinels. They don't want to play the pig, another card that they're potentially holding back, and then that's allowing Ronin to scale even higher up. We have the Nova Killmonger combo. A lot of powerful one costs getting played these days, and Spider Ham, I don't care if his body stays around or not, so we can happily trim off some of the opponent's power that they invested into Nebula or Sunspot and then be able to level them otherwise. Mystique with a lot of great targets. We're running Zabu ourselves and Sarah, Doctor Doom. We don't want to get picked here, that's for dang sure. The Sarah or the Doctor Doom getting picked would be lights out for this list, but. Everything else comes together quite nicely, and we do have a solid backup plan of just putting points onto the Hawk. Another card that we love being able to scale if their hand gets filled out to the max, and then they're not drawing additional cards, so the cards are staying in the deck, the Hawk gets even larger. It's been a tested deck, it's, it's quite solid at the moment. And then this one, perfect pick also is guaranteed to be an incredible deck because it's in the high evolutionary lockjaw shell right now we're actually very happy to cycle the spider ham at the lockjaw because we don't want the one power body we just want his effect then he can get traded for a more pivotal card later on running the infinite here so in the version of this deck is ready for the mirror matchup 
Up against other Hyeva, we have Luke Cage. If they are running Spider Ham, we have Infinite. Actually, if Hulk gets hit, we don't mind too much. So this list also just is the, the meta staple right now, and Spider Ham can plug in quite happily because of his synergies with the Lockjaw and just the, the pivotal control ability that he is leveling. I frolic and I dance and I do this with my okay, pants and my- Okay, enough! The focus of this video though is going to be bounce and let's see what kind of how, how much we're able to ham it up i wasn't sure exactly where i wanted to go there but i think that's the line that we're gonna take got the kitty buffed up the bishop ready to go just want to be able to draw my beautiful porker i'll go for i think i push for kitty here we're holding Witch as a bit of a location fixer. Bounce has been retooled a little bit. I had been running the Hawk package within Bounce, but here cutting it in favor of including the Ham and then the Scarlet Witch. And I do really like the uh, the, the line of play. I think it is an improvement. Improvement. I will go Bishop down here on the Throne Room. Probably my only card that would have a shot being able to get the doubling. Kitty already up the five because of Bast's helping hand. Bast is so good, guys. All right. We are holding the ham. But getting free kitty is just so good. Ah, uh, maybe we actually go for the ham. Let's hit him. Let's pick him out. Cyclops? Sure, sure. I suppose if you didn't want to run the Scarlet Witch, your other option would be a loot cage to be able to give you greater benefit here. Bonk. Got him. We're coming right back at you. <laughs> Try and clip another one of those. I know they run a lot of expensive cards. It would be a shame if none of those cards had any abilities. Right? Right? Is this my shot to play the hit monkey? It actually could be. I can go Kitty Mysterio. And Monkey. A lot of power to Lemuria, actually, but... I'll play it. My opponent doesn't know what to do. They're all pigged. Funk. Got the same one, unfortunately. Picking out the Hulk. So the Hulk there maintaining the power that he'd had from his ongoing abilities. So he's actually not reset to 12, but he's not scaling anymore. I was really hoping that we could have flipped like Dr. Doom as well. Now they play the wave. All right, very happy that I dumped on five here. I think, honestly, if you're in doubt of when you need to dump the hand, make it turn five rather than holding all the way back for six. And with wave, I don't understand how you beat me. I mean, Dr. Doom doesn't do it. Hulk could be able to win on, on left, but uh, otherwise. This is all ours. And Bishop, you are at nine. Yeah, that's what I thought. Victory. Another opening bast with the throne room. Incredible, incredible. I feel like I'm even seeing hallmarks to my previous opening hand. I suppose Scarlet, Scarlet Witch and Bishop, I think were there. Angela was not. Angela's new. Well, which is great. I'll give her that. Play to the throne room. Careful about nowhere. Definitely don't want to line up our ham right there. They have their own kitty. Ooh, how does ham play with bounce? Actually, excellently, right? Like, I feel like anything on the more expensive side for bounce, we could even be hitting something like a two cost. With a, a bounce hand, we could be hitting, if we had him, could be hitting something like beast, their bishop. I mean, my deck is topping out at three. They could have a deck that has a, a tech card like Shang-Chi and I can't wait to see what I hit. Come on. Pick up the bass and the spider ham here. Buff the Angela and Bishop at the exact same time. I don't have the I don't have the feel yet if I want to snap now or if I, I hold back. It could also be Sarah, right? Oh, we snap, we snap. There we go. Demoralize them. Now, they're not going to have anything else for Ham to be able to hit. Sarah is going to be the most expensive card for sure. Um, mm, sunspot? Okay, beautiful. That means that they will not run Killmonger. That's even better for me. I'll still play Spider Ham again to be able to get the extra Bishop activation, but that's the only reason. What else? What else here? 
I think I actually go like hood on left. And then witch. Might as well bast, right, to pick the spider ham up. Excuse me? You lost your Sarah? And you're confidently proclaiming that you can take this for eight cubes? Make it make sense. I'll bet they have Shang-Chi to be able to kill Angela. Is that what you're thinking? To be able to kill here? I guess? Would love to see Head Monkey on the next draw. Dark Dimension. No, my best. There it goes. And honestly, I should have done a different order of um, Hood and Fast. So that I wouldn't have been trimming off on my demon. Which, no, I don't do. So, I guess it, uh, it all came around. Well, let's see. You're winning throne room just looking away. How much am I able to, to throw down here? I have Bast. I go Demon. I go Mysterio. Hi-ho, Mysterio. And then Beast. Beast will not activate because of nowhere. So you're getting Bishop. Buffed by another 3, 4, 5. Plus 4 again. That feels quite strong, honestly. It also feels like we have a strong stack over here on the right. I'm wondering if I need to just, uh, like, moving moving the Mysterio is probably the easiest card to be able to adapt to, right? This is definitely going here. Has to. I want the demon on right. You're at 9, 10 right now. Do I want it at 14? Or do I need to try and keep pace at nowhere? I probably need to keep better pace at nowhere, because he does have the Angela scaling. But is it even to the point of flipping the demon? I don't know. I think the demon has to stay. All right. I made a dicey at the end. I respect it. They split? They played the throne room? Excuse me? With the kitty? And then? Lizard? <laughs> Ooh. Take it out that Sarah. Looks like it burned him a little bit. Looks like it burned him just a little bit. Ah, oh, feels good. Alright, we go ham, giddy. We might want to stack these guys. Ah, oh, I got the Doctor Doom. <laughs> yes! No, no, Luke Cage. I'm not, I'm not coming for your power. I'm just coming for your guard's abilities. I want to pick them out. Then we'll play Hood again. Kitty again. Basically, I want to pick these guys up. What kind of deck are you? Are you the lockdown version or are you the lockjaw version? Lockjaw is going to have more six guys to throw at us that I would be able to pick out. Lockdown. I mean, I could hit his Hulk, right? That'd be something. There would be something to say about that. I'm just going to give him the draw. I don't mind. Cycle my cards, make them free. They're gonna go Jubilee. I'd probably lose anyway if I tried to contest on mid. Jane Foster. All right, you are the Lockjaw version, which means there's likely gonna be even more targets in hand, especially after all this card draw, for spider Ham to be able to hit. There we go, double draw. I don't draw anything. Right, right, right. I need to drop the Hit Monkey now. Yes, we'll get Head Monkey down. We'll go. Hood. Wow, I can play a lot. Hood, Ham. I don't necessarily want the Ham back. The Hood is the one I want back. So I will play Falcon now. Then I'll play Spider Ham. Then I will play Kitty Pride. Then I will play. Demon? Looks like we're trying to contest on mid a little bit. Okay, so I get the hood back. I have another demon in hand. I pig... I take another rule of the dice at picking another card of theirs. And I'm gonna get Kitty back as well. She'll be free. Big ol' head monkey. Would love to top deck. I'm not sure. 
Top Goblin comes across? But why? Why do you run the Hobgoblin? Is this your adaptation of the Lockjaw? Okay, we picked the same card. Either that means he didn't draw another one, or he was saved. Fascinating. Are you Galactus? You, you could be, right? If you are, don't I beat you like this, though? Like, all around beat you like this? I'll bet you wanted to do them. I think there's gonna be a lot of emotes like that on the spider ham. J Devil Dinosaur? Alright, number one, I didn't think that people ran Devil Dinosaur in these high Evo decks. Number two, I'm surprised that my opponent thought that was the wind. Victory. The extra emote on the ham, let's go. So here is the deck in all of its picky powered glory. Spider Ham looking like an insane one cost control piece. Whether or not the meta shifts into running a lot of infinites, I think that he is still going to be a staple and he is a steal at the 3000 token cost. Now, I will say the weekend mission that I am expecting this weekend that's going to be the pseudo token rebate for owning Spider Ham, I think is going to be very weak. Don't necessarily make that the reason that you're getting it. I'm actually expecting it only to be 100 tokens. Uh, but everything else here just comes together beautifully. Bounces an archetype that I will come back to time and time again. And running the spider ham in place of the Iceman feels fantastic. Especially because you get to know what you hit. Again, that information that you're gaining as you pick out their best card. Hmm. It is so dang satisfying. And it means that you'll never be surprised by a pig infinite, right? That is probably the greatest piece here is because you could have some really nasty surprises in tone um, after you play that spider ham, but you're always going to know right after you drop him what you are in for. If you guys pick this one up, I hope it ends you many cubes on your climb up to infinite ladder or conquest. I will vouch for this deck's stability in both situations. Until next time, thank you guys for watching. Keep on snapping.